Lesson 13, Landmark Religion Supreme Court Cases in the Schools, Part 2. What about prayer in the schools? The landmark case dealing with prayer in the schools was Engel versus Vital in 1962. The New York Board of Education directed its school officials to have all classes recite a special prayer each morning. This was the prayer. Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee, and we beg thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. Parents of ten pupils brought a lawsuit claiming prayer was contrary to their beliefs, religions, or religious practices. This was what was called a class action suit, when a group of people file suit rather than an individual. Class action. The state courts upheld the right of the state to use the prayer. So in other words, the courts in New York State supported the school Board of Education. They, they were called the Regents of New York State. It's like, the, it's like the North Carolina Board of Public Education. The Regents of New York State. The state courts upheld and supported the school prayer. This is what the state court said. As long as the schools did not compel the pupil to join in the prayer over his or her parents' objection, then it was okay to have prayer in New York State schools. So the case goes before the Supreme Court on appeal from the majority opinion. There can be no doubt that New York's state prayer program officially established their religious beliefs embodied in the regent's prayer. The fact that the prayer may be denominationally neutral, nor the fact that its observation on the part of the students is voluntary, can serve to free it from the limitations of the Establishment Clause as it might from the Free Exercise Clause of the First Amendment. So basically, the Supreme Court is ruling that although the prayer may be voluntary, it is still a violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment even though the prayer is denominationally neutral, meaning you cannot tell what religious denomination or sect uh, the prayer uh, represents. But the fact is, some type of religious belief is established by the state. the men who led the fight for adoption of our Constitution and also for our Bill of Rights knew that the First Amendment was written to quiet the well-justified fears to make men's tongues speak only the religious thoughts that government wanted them to speak and to pray only to the God that government wanted them to pray to. It is neither sacrilegious nor anti-religious to say that each separate government in this country should stay out of the business of writing or sanctioning official prayers and leave that purely religious function 
to the people themselves. One dissenting justice wrote, I cannot see how an official religion is being established by letting those who want to say a prayer say it. On the contrary, I think that to deny the wish of these school children to join in reciting this prayer is to deny them the opportunity of sharing in the spiritual heritage of our nation. I dissent. The result of Engel versus Vital is that public school systems today cannot start the day with a prayer. One Alabama congressman said, the Supreme Court has put the Negroes in the schools and now they've driven God out. What about Bible reading? This case, 1963, Abington School District versus Shemp. Pennsylvania law required at least 10 verses from the Holy Bible shall be read without comment at the opening of each public school day. Any child shall be excused from such Bible reading. The Shemps objected to the readings because they were Unitarians they do not hold or believe that the Bible is always intelligible when read literally. They objected to their two children being sent out into the hallway during the reading. A federal court sided with the Shemps and found Pennsylvania's law unconstitutional. The case was then appealed by the Abington School District to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court heard the case, an eight to one ruling. The practice at issue and the laws requiring them are unconstitutional under the Establishment Clause. In the relationship between man and religion, the state is firmly committed to a position of neutrality. The Supreme Court stated that the Bible might properly, properly be used for historical or literary studies, but the exercises here do not fall into these categories. I know as part of my world civilizations class, Whenever we got around to studying Christianity, I would pass out passages from the Sermon on the Mount in the New Testament. And I would always have a student or two comment that you cannot pass out passages from the Bible in school. Of course you can. As long as those passages are taught as history or literary studies. Dissenting Justice Potter Stewart was concerned that the rights of other children to take part in a religious prayer exercise were being denied. Okay, so what are the results of Barnett, Vital, and Shemp. Public school students do not have to stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. You may notice that during second period when students choose not to stand during the reciting of the pledge. The Supreme Court has ruled that is their constitutional right not to stand. The state, meaning government, and school officials are an extension of government, cannot compel students to stand, cannot make them feel uncomfortable for not standing, cannot send them out in the hallway during the pledge. 
School systems cannot begin the school day with prayer. Obviously, this is a violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. Even if the prayer is non-denominational, even if you cannot detect what religion is being referenced by the prayer. The Bible cannot be read as the official religious text, but can be studied as a part of history or to, uh, to, or to comparative religion, religions class or uh, literature class. The Bible can be studied if it fits that curriculum, but it simply cannot be read as the official religious text. Obviously a violation of the Establishment Clause as well. But what can you do in public schools with respect to your religious beliefs? You can pray on your own. You may see students doing that in the cafeteria. You may see students doing that before a major test. You may see students doing that during lunch in the classroom. Several years ago, we had a Islamic Muslim school teacher and Islamic students would go into her classroom during lunch and they would pray. That is acceptable. That is on their own time. They are choosing to do this. You have a right to pull out your Bible and read it on your own or your Quran or uh, whatever religious text you may have. Read it before class, after class, in the cafeteria, in the media center, on your own time. You can meet voluntarily with others before school, during lunch, after school to practice your faith. Several, many students used to meet out in front of the school around the flagpole um, before school started on Fridays. And they would form a circle around the flagpole and hold hands, pray. Again, this is all voluntary. There is no coercion involved. There is no compulsion involved. Those who say we do not have religion in the schools, those critics are wrong. The school simply cannot compel and force students towards a certain religious belief. The schools cannot violate the establishment and free exercise clauses in our First Amendment of our Constitution. This concludes Lesson 13, the landmark Supreme Court cases with respect to religion in the schools.